Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 4 through 7. The title of the message is Selfless Christian. Selfless Christian. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Manifesting your love on Calvary's cross, where you shed your precious blood to wash all our sins away. And thank you for giving us good mothers, where they were able to be a good influence to us spiritually, where we were able to come to you as sinners and accept the gospel. Help each and every one of us to be selfless. Help us to give unto you and give unto others. That's how you give in everything that you have for us. We ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit we ask you that the words that come out of his mouth, they will be from you. So use them, mighty Lord, and also fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to focus only on your word and not on things that are happening around us or anywhere else. And pray that you'll receive all the glory and honor. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The best way to characterize human beings is, you know, one word, selfish. You know, human beings are naturally selfish, very selfish. You and I are born into this world as sinners, and one that epitomizes, you know, our sinfulness is that, you know, we're selfish. We want to do things for our own benefit. Selfish Christians are abundant. There's reason why, you know, church is split. There's reason why there's always, you know, fighting and bickering inside the church. We're not talking about, you know, outside, unsafe world. We're talking about inside a Bible-believing, you know, King James, you know, born-again Christian. There are many, many instances where people don't come to church, people leave church, because of their own selfishness. At the end of the day, the people that you used to see are no longer here because for any other reason than, you know, because of their physical ailments or, you know, unusual or unexpected circumstance. It's because of selfishness. A lot of times they will say, you know, I was wrong. You know, they, they did wrong to me. You know, never looking at their own selves. I gave this example many times. You know, some in the past, this sister, you know, left the church because it started out with because someone looked at her the wrong way. Can you believe it? You know, that kid should not have never looked at me that way. Her should have never looked at me that way. That brother, sister, the way they looked at me, and I'm pretty sure they didn't even care. They're probably just walking, you know, have an eye contact and just go. I mean, they might even said hi. But because you're always center of attention, you want to be that center of attention, you become engulfed with your selfishness. As Christians, you yourself will be selfish if you don't let the Holy Spirit control your life. That's number one thing. You and I could preach to each other. You and I could talk about it all the time. However, if, you're not, if your heart is not controlled by the Holy Ghost, there's no way you're not going to be selfish. Even then, 
Even right now, at this moment, many people, whether you're listening on the internet or whether you're listening on, the, you know, on your pews, you're thinking about what can benefit me today? What can benefit me tomorrow? What can benefit me you know, five years from now, 10 years from now? You're just constantly thinking about you, you, you. You're constantly thinking about your selfishness. You're constantly thinking about, you know, I just want to be happy. I want all the pleasures in my life. Bible has a good example, and he's a great example. David, a man after God's own heart. However, David, you know, he committed some great sins, right? Two of them was adultery and murder. Why did that happen? At the end of the day, it happened because of his selfishness. He wanted Bathsheba. He, for his self-fulfillment, what did he do? He killed Uriah, right? He committed great sin. If someone like David, don't tell me like you're better than David, right? You know, I'll never commit those sins. Yeah, right, you've probably committed hundreds of times or thousands of times in your heart already, right? Inward. You know, it's not just about your outside sin, you know, that matters. More than not, it's your inside, you know. Your inside is full of sin. That's why I emphasize and over and over and again, in order to start the day, and if you want to live a selfless Christian life, you have to spend time with the Lord and make sure that you let the Holy Ghost control your life for that day. And it's every day, you know, every single day. Even today, you know, I ask this question because I know that not everybody does it, right? As a Christian, did you wake up in the morning? Did you get on your knees? And did you pray to God, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today, like Ephesians 5.18. I don't want my flesh to control me today. You could have best intentions in the world. You say, I want to be a selfless Christian. However, if you don't let the Lord control your life, if you don't let the Holy Spirit be filled in your life, there's no way. You and I are so weak. As flesh, you know, we cannot defeat sin, right? Think about it. What does your flesh want to do? Your flesh just wants to pleasure yourself, right? You want to get all the pleasure. No, that's why it happened to David. David wanted that pleasure. That's why he committed that sin. And many times when you look at your past or when you look at your present and what's going to happen in the future, you're going to commit sin because you want to fulfill your selfish pleasures, right? And you tend to forget that you're a new creature, you know, saved by blood of Jesus Christ, and you're no longer you. You know, you should have, and you should always, you know, put your body on the cross and let the Lord rule over you. But instead, you leave the Lord at the cross and you rule over your heart. That's where, you know, problems occur. What was the problem with another selfish person in the Bible? Cain. Right? We see him right away. You know, Cain was envious and he was jealous of his brother. Of course, you know, he complained that the Lord didn't accept his sacrifice. But you could see. Many people who are selfish are very, very jealous people and very, very envious people. You look at yourself. Do you feel kind of down? Do you feel like you're kind of missing something or you feel that, you know, hollowness when someone around you do better? When some good things happen to people around you, do you feel like, man, that should have happened to me instead of them? Do you have that kind of like, or regrets or discouragement that comes to you? That just tells you that you're very selfish. Yeah. Even as a Christian, there's so many instances, right? When something good happens to other Christians, so many other Christians like complain to others about gossiping, backbiting, but complain to God. God, how come this did not happen to me? Let's say, for example, maybe 
you want to get a good job. And you have another brother or sister who's in your same situation. And they get a job. They get a good job. And you still didn't get it. And then how do you feel? Do you congrat congratulate the brethren, brother, sister? Man, I'm so really happy for you, you know. Or you're like, you're fake, right? Hypocrisy. I, hey, congratulations, but inside of you, man, you don't deserve it. I deserve it more than you. Man, I serve you better. You know, I don't see you read the Bible. I don't see you doing street preaching visitation. You know, I don't even see you on every Sunday. Why, why do you get it? You know, how come I didn't get it? I mean, truly a selfish person. And it happens a lot. You know, it's a Mother's Day, but I'm sorry to mothers. When other children do well or better than your child, you kind of get jealous. You become envious. And then even though they're in a Christian circle, you start talking or you start gossiping. You're like, man, that boy don't deserve to go to that school, you know? That girl, you know, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't deserve to, you know, do that. You know, she doesn't deserve that. And suddenly, we have a group of mothers forget about selfless, being selfless Christian, and start gathering together and start gossiping about other people. It's funny, isn't it? You know, there's a, a pretty funny story where, you know, girls, you know, have a night over together, and then each time one other girl goes out, they gossip about the other girl, and they come in. But I'm sure it happens with the boys too, right? You know, they're going here, you know, Jimmy, Johnny, and, you know, David is sitting together. You know, David's gone. You know, Jimmy and David's talking bad about the other person, you know. And then just conversation goes like that. That's why you have to really look at yourself. Selfish Christians, right? They ne they're never happy when something good happens to other people, you know? And they're always faking it. You know, I think the worst thing is, you know, flattery, right? You're like, man, I appreciate you so much. I'm so glad this thing happened to you and your family. You go home and start talking to your children or your husband or wife, complaining about that family that you just say, you know, I appreciate you. Right? Selfish Christians cannot accept any preaching or criticism either. If you are a selfish person sitting right now, when God is speaking to you, to your heart, and God convicts you so that you change and become a better Christian, better mother, better father, better child, what happens? You're like, I can't take it. You know? You know who could take it or who should take it? That person sitting in front of me. That person sitting behind me. You know, that person sitting next to me. You know? They need to hear this more than me. Truly a selfish person. You know? There will, there will, you could sit on the same pew for 200 years and you'll never change. Because you're just full of selfishness. And then what happens? Another common characteristic. Just look at the kids, right, growing up nowadays, right? Especially children growing up without any discipline. What do selfish people think? They think they deserve everything. Right? They're entitled. They think they deserve everything. When I'm 16, when I could drive, my parents better have a you know, car key for me on my birthday. Right? Yeah, they're like, OK. Even little kids, right? OK. My mom better give me that expensive Lego or toys, you know, because I deserve it. You know? A lot of times it's fault of the parents, right? How you raise your children you know, reflects how you are, right? But however, it's just embedded in human being to be selfish where you think that you deserve everything. That's why you have to get rid of that mindset. As a Christian, you know, you don't deserve anything. Like the Bible says, you know, we're nothing but a dust saved by grace of God. That's it. We're wretched sinners just saved by grace. Without his grace and mercy, you and I will be burning in hell, right? That's where we have to start. 
you know, we got to start at the bottom and we should stay at the bottom when it comes to looking at ourselves. That will keep us humble. You know, dust, when you look at dust, do you want to praise the dust, right? I mean, unless you're an animal, right? Do you want to, like, roll around the dust and then put dust on your, you know, body, right? And like, you know what? I feel so good. I feel so happy, right? No. You avoid it. I mean, you're full of dust. You go home and clean up. But when you realize that, you know, I'm nothing but a dust, you know, I'm like nothing, you know, just sinner saved by grace, then you will start thinking that, you know what, I don't deserve anything. I should be thankful for everything that I deserve. And it starts from young age. Right? Then you become more appreciative. And when Mother's Day comes, you become more appreciative and reminded of love that your mothers give to you or gave to you. You're like, you know what? When I think about you know, how my mother you know, you know, cared for me, cares for me still, man, that really shows how selfless she is. She doesn't want anything back from me, right? Selfish people, another character. When you give someone something, you expect something in return, right? That is a very selfish person. Okay, someone's birthday comes. You gave him a good birthday present, right? Your birthday comes. You're like, mm, where's mine? Right? I'm like, you, you buy him a water, right? It's hot day. Another hot day comes. You have money to buy it, but you're looking at the other person. Where's my water? Remember that time when I bought water for you? Right? You feel so entitled. You feel like, you know what? I give because I know I'm going to get something in return. When that happens, your circle of acquaintance or close people disappear, right? Who wants to be with someone, unless they're the same, right? But who wants to be with someone where, you know what? If he gives me five bucks, I have to give him five bucks. No, I don't want to deal with that, right? If she buys me lunch, I have to buy her dinner. I don't want to deal with that, you know? But it's so prevalent in Christian communities. It's so prevalent amongst Bible believers. You look at yourself. Do you give out of, you know, pure heart, out of generosity, you know, out of charity, out of love when you help your brethren, right? Or do you do it so that you could get something back, so that in the future, you could use that as a card, you know, that get out of jail card, so that you could tell them. Remember, you know, I helped you out a couple years ago, right? I'm in a bind right now, help me. You know, you should never talk like that, you know? What's done is done. If Lord Jesus Christ died for us in that way, what would happen to us, right? I mean, he gave us free gift of salvation. Imagine if we had to pay for everything, for every, pay for all of our sins. You and I wouldn't be here, you know? We'll be down there already. That's why we got to thank God that he gives us his grace freely, and we need to give to others freely as well when it comes to grace and mercy. That's when, you know, Christian love and charity grows, right? When Christians stop being selfish, in the Bible, we have another example. We have Ahab, right? You know, character, right? Ahab and Jezebel. What did he do? One of the famous stories is what? You know, he wanted Naboth, you know, vineyard. He didn't get it. So what do selfish people do? You know, they start crying. I mean, he was, he was a king. He was a king. But he couldn't get Naboth's vineyard. So he started crying out to his wife, right? I don't know about you guys, you know. If something does not go your way, do you guys go to your mom? Do you guys go to your wife and husband? You know, when even though it was your fault, and you start crying, right? I mean, that's the funny part. You always try to justify your sin. That's why you go to someone who you think will be on your side. That's what Ahab was thinking, you know. 
Jezebel felt very wicked, you know. You know I don't have guts to get rid of Naboth, right? So I'm going to let Jezebel, you know, get rid of him so I could take over. Man, that's another, another characteristic of a selfish Christian. They do things indirectly, and they want other people to take care of it. Such a coward Christian, right? You want to drink a cup of water, but you're so embarrassed and shy, and you have the pride, right? There's no way I'm going to ask that person to give me water. They should have given it to me already. Don't they know who I am? You know? So you have another brother. You're like, don't you think you know, he should give me some water? I'm pretty thirsty, right? And then the other brother doesn't know, right? He's got a good heart. Runs to the other person. Hey, go give him some water. And you get your water. You're satisfied. Yeah, that's how it works, you know? What a selfish person. And maybe sometimes you too, you should look at yourself. You want to get your way. You want to fulfill your selfish, you know, pleasure. So you use other people. Because you don't want to taint your name, right? Because your name is so precious and holy and special. So instead of you being honest, you start hiding under your selfishness, and you start letting other people do your work. And you get all the glory. How many of you guys gone through that? Do not raise your hand. You know. But I'm sure many of you have gone through that kind of selfish ways. Right? And I'll end with this example for this one. Selfish people always hurt people around them. That's number one. Selfish people always hurt other people. They don't care about other people, honestly. They might care for them afterwards, right? That's a big difference. A lot of people care for others after they committed their sin, after they've done wrong. But they don't think about it while they're doing it. Why do you think, you know, fights, break out when there's, there's no reason for a fight. What do you think husband and you know, wife fight for something that's so trivial? What do you think kids fight? What do you think brothers fight, right? Or sisters fight, siblings fight? What do you think some church people fight? Because they're, they're so selfish, they don't think about the consequences, and they always think, I'm the most important person. You have to get over that. You are not the most important person. You are the least important person, right? If you thought you were most important, you are not. You are the least of least, according to the word of God. You compare yourself. You know, look at Apostle Paul. Did he ever raise his hand? I'm better than you Christians. Did you ever see like John Wesley? Like write on his journals, like I'm better than everybody. They they were humble. They always viewed themselves as a wretched sinner. They appreciated the opportunity that God gave them, the second life as a Christian. You should appreciate God that you have a second life as a Christian. You are on your way to hell, living in sin. And without Lord Jesus Christ, you would have burned in hell forever. But he saved you from hell, and you have a second chance. You cannot neglect that chance with your selfishness. Then we went over some of the selfish Christians. Then who are like selfless Christians? We know the story of a, a, of an example in the Word of God. We know Esther. It's being taught in one of the classes. Right? Esther. Esther went against the law of the land. Why? Because for the people, Jewish people. And you know what? She said, I perish, I perish. Amen. That is selfless person. Right? I don't care what happens to me. Whether I die or not, I'm going to do what's right. That selfless person. 
when it comes to the Word of God, it's full of selfless characters. You could see it from the Lord Jesus Christ. You could see it from many of the characters. And Esther kind of sums it up. You know what? I'm going to do what's right. If I perish, I perish. Did Esther say, you know, if these things happen, I want all the accolade? No. Did Esther say, if these things happen, you know, I want the whole world, give me money, you know, give me fame? No. She just did it. When you do things as a selfless Christian, you do it because it's right. Because you know that's something that Lord Jesus Christ will do. Do you know why mothers do what they do? Because their love is, you know what? It's right for me. You know? I don't care what other people think. That's why when, you know, extreme example, when the child does something horrible, mothers still are on their side and they love him. Because that's what they believe. You know what? I do what I do. I don't care if I perish or not because that's my love for my child. When you do things as a Christian, you do it. I do what I do because I love my Lord Jesus Christ. I perish, I perish. That's it. Think about it. When you're doing something for Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be fearful of your situation, circumstances, and you will not be fearful of men, human beings. A lot of selfish people are fearful of men. They think about what other people think. They think about what other men and women think. They think about what their friends think. They think about what, you know, that church member think or that church member think. Those are selfish people. So your, your behavior and actions are predicated by what other people think. If other person wants you to be mean to other person or they're happy when you are mean to other person because they're a wicked person, you act that way. And they smile at you, you're like, oh man, I feel good. But it happens. That's why there's cliques. That's why there's divisions inside the church. Because they're selfish and they're afraid of other people, right? You should only fear God, right? If you don't fear God, you're going to fear man. That's simple as that. And selfless Christians, they have conviction. They fear God, and they do not fear man. And their actions, they do. Why? Because they fear God, and they love God. And then what happens? That selfless Christian, they're genuine. There's no fakeness in it. There's no hypocrisy. I think the, one of the worst things that happens to a person is when they get betrayed. You only get betrayed because you trust someone, because you love someone, right? And we, he, we see it all the time. Betrayal amongst friends, betrayal amongst you know, business people, betrayal amongst relationships, right? When people like, cheat on each other, betrayals amongst you know, church members. They say, I love you. I pray for you. I want what's best for you. And behind your back, they think they talk about, you know, trash about you, right? For lack of better words, you know? What does that show? They're not selfless Christian. They're very selfish. Then you look at yourself. When you deal with people, do you do it out of pure heart? Are you genuine, right? I mean, do you do it out of a brotherly love? Or do you do it because you want to save your face? Superstitious people are very easy to find. If you deal with them many times, right? And we deal with them many times in this world. Where do you find most superficial people, right? Politicians. They say, okay, I love you, I love you people. They do, they say all this, but it never gets done. It's the opposite. When, as a Christian, you act so superficial, fake, just think about it, you're not different than just, you know, sleazy politician out there. You know? 
you might as well run for a race, you might win it. Because that's how sleazy, that's how hypocritical you are. Then, as a selfless Christian, you show your charity, you show care for others without any you know, hypocrisy, envy, jealousy, or lies. And there's a lot more to go through, but due to time, selfless Christian, lastly, they sacrifice. If you have never sacrificed for anything in your life, you're selfish. You only do things for your own pleasure. But if you have sacrificed your time, your sleep, right, your social status, your emotions, finances, and even your careers, then you are one of those rare, few, selfless person, selfless people. But you do all this for Lord Jesus Christ at the end of the day. The solution, conclusion is, do I think more about me or do I think more about Lord Jesus Christ? Do I think more about me or do I think of more about others? You know, General Booth on his dying bed, right? People ask, you know, what, what, is, what would be your lasting word? He just said one word, others. He said others. I mean, just by his life and just by looking at, you know, his testimony, I know that he was a selfless person who lived his life for others with the goal of them getting saved, right? Saved from hell. See, your selfless actions can lead others to the Lord because God will open opportunities. When people talk about selfless person, they might say they're stupid, right? Because they're not selfish, but they don't talk bad about them. They would rather hear from them than someone who's selfish. When you're selfless, God will open more doors for you to witness to lost souls out there. Maybe the reason you have no fruit in your life is because you're selfish. When you become more selfless, you will have more fruits. You will have fruit of the Spirit, and then you lead more souls to the Lord, and you have more fruit in your family, in church, at school, at work, where you'll be living with joy. You'll be living with charity. You'll be, when sacrifice comes your way, you embrace it instead of kicking it out of the way. Ask yourself, have I been selfish? When will I become selfless? Let's pray. Dear and Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're nothing but a dust, wretched sinner, saved by grace, Lord. However, we forget because we're so selfish. We let flesh control us, and we neglect the virtual, virtuous things, Lord. Help us to recognize that we're such a selfish human being, and help us to be filled with the Holy Ghost each day, and help us to live a selfless Christian life, so that at the end of the day, we have a closer relationship with you, lead others to you, and have better fellowship with our family and our brethren. Lord God, we pray for Pastor Shrive and those who are ailing, Lord. Please heal them as soon as possible. And I pray that you'll bless the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.